Okay, uh, this is our next session in regard to our study on who is worthy to go in the rapture. And um, please listen to the other videos that I've done on this subject so you can get the other information that, that we've covered. Um, and the good news, as I share with you, is that uh, all true believers in the Messiah will go in the rapture. Uh, regardless of uh, if they're paying attention or watching as, you know, what, and let me say this about that. Most people uh, read into something that really, when the Messiah and Mashiach said that we're to watch and pray that we might be accounted worthy uh, to escape in these things, and he was, of course, making reference to the uh, Daniel 70th week or the tribulation period that we refer to often as the seven-year tribulation. But when he was talking about, uh, he, you have to understand that he wasn't talking when those verses, uh, and when he spoke those verses, he wasn't specifically talking just to the church. Or he was talking, in fact, he was really just talking to everyone in the sense that uh, if someone it has not received the Messiah, uh, who has not already uh say, recognize their need for, for a Savior and have called upon the one the Father has sent. Of course, he, he declared himself that everyone that would look to him shall be saved and that he was the one that the Father has sent uh, to be the Savior of the world. And so when he's talking there about being ready and accounted worthy, he's, of course, he's speaking to you know a, a general audience and the fact is that that would apply to everybody. But but as far as the church is concerned, you know, if you've already have received the Messiah, then you're already worthy or counted worthy to re to uh, to escape the things that are going to be coming upon the earth. But we also should be aware. It's important for for believers, true believers, to be aware. Um, I know that there's a lot of believers who not are aware of the time frame that we're living in, and that we're on the the very edge of the tribulation and on the very edge of the rapture because the rapture must precede uh, the tribulation period. And so there are a lot of people who aren't paying attention, but they are saved and they will go in the rapture because they're part of the church. They are going, they're part of, the, of the, what the scripture refers to us, you know, in, in the book of Revelation chapter 19, that the saints have, have made themselves ready. And the only way you can make yourself ready is by receiving the righteousness of the Messiah, not your own righteousness. See, we're given robes of righteousness. Our righteousness is not our, of ourselves. It's the gift of uh, our creator, those that would believe on the one the Father sent. And so uh, I want to read in this session, I was going to continue on in Ephesians, and I plan to get to there, but there are some things I said in our previous video that I know that people you know, automatically have questions because they think of certain other verses and they think, well, how can this be if so-and-so and so-and-so? And, -so -and, -so? Well, and you have to realize the problem, you know, when you're doing short little segments like I do, uh, it's hard to cover everything in one video. So you have to, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be to expounded upon because people have questions and they, uh, which are legitimate questions and the verses that, uh, in the scripture that confuses people and they won't have, want to have answers. So I, I made a comment in, in the last session about, you know, that we're you're not justified by keeping the law and that um, I want to expand a little bit about that because I'm not saying that the law has been done away with. The law is still in effect, but as far as the consequences of the law, true believers in the Messiah have been redeemed from the curse of the law according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. And of course, when I use the word law, you understand I'm taught that word actually would be the word, what the word really refers to as the Torah. Uh, the Torah being the, uh, you know, the first five books of the Bible. And these were the, the instructions of our creator. In, in other words, the word Torah actually means in Hebrew to, to point us into the right direction. Uh, Paul also mentioned in the book of Galatians that the, the Torah was our schoolmaster to bring us to the Messiah. In other words, the purpose of the Torah, the purpose of the, of the law, was not to uh, impart eternal life as far as by keeping the law. Because if you do enough study and understand that 
no one is justified by the works of the law. And the reason for that is that if you break one point of the law, you become guilty of all of it. So I don't care if you say you keep the Sabbath or if you do this or do that. Uh, you, you have in this concept that you constantly, you keep the law. I, I, I'm a lot of friends to a lot of Messianic Jewish believers on Facebook and, and, um, and even on my YouTube channel and, and so forth. And, uh, but there's a lot of people who are, who are really mistaken thinking that, that, you know, that we're still, that if you're a believer, still have to keep all the works of the law. And, the, and when I say works of the law, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm expounding upon the Ten Commandments. I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about all the other things because there's much more than just the Ten Commandments. If you're talking about keeping the Torah or the law, there's actually 600, I believe, 613 uh, different commandments in the Torah uh, that the Yahudim or the Jews were to follow. And again, if you break one of those, you're guilty of all of them. You can see the uh, the frustration of mankind that really tries to justify himself by keeping the law. Uh, he, he comes to the conclusion that he can't do it. Well, that's exactly the purpose of the law, was to bring you and I to a recognition that we needed a Savior. So that's why Paul referred to it as pointing us, or being our schoolmaster to bring us to the Messiah, that we would come to our desperation, that we would let go of our pride, thinking that we could somehow earn our way into heaven, that we could somehow be given eternal life by keeping the, the, the Torah, and that the only way of salvation is through the Messiah. Now, the reason the law is still in place is because, you know, it, it actually brings a man to a recognition, like I said, that he's a sinner. But once, you, once a sinner recognizes that, and that he's called upon the Messiah for his Savior, He's no longer what the scripture calls a sinner. He is referred to as a saint. He's referred to as a saint, one that is set apart, uh, one that is already declared righteous. And we're going to go into more about what, the, what it means to be righteous because a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of believers, if you were to go up to most people today that go to church and that claim to be born again or ha have the spirit, if you would ask them, are they righteous? Their answer would be, well, I'm trying to be. And see, if that would be your answer, then it shows to me that you don't understand what it means to be righteous. I'm not righteous in myself. I'm only righteous in, in his righteousness. But you have to understand that that's been imparted to you as a gift. And that once you have received the Messiah, then you have the uh, guarantee of the, of the scripture. By Ephesians, Paul talked about that the spirit is the guarantee of, uh, of our redemption that once the uh, rapture takes place, the rapture, the redemption of our body will be complete, and redemption will be complete at that point. Uh, but we are still in a, in a flesh body that still has a fallen nature and is still subject to sin and wrongdoing. Now, to be righteous doesn't mean that you don't ever sin again. It just means that that uh, you, uh, if you, if you're a believer and you are righteous, then if you do fall into sin, it's because you've yielded your flesh. Uh, to, to allow that to happen. and But the scripture is very clear in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, he cleanses us from the consciousness of not being right. See, you're still righteous. If you, were, if you had to be born again again every time that you sinned, then, uh, or that the spirit, the, the spirit would leave you the moment that you sinned, I mean, he, he'd be coming and going constantly. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we, he, we have his promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Now, salvation after the rapture happens is going to be uh, much different uh, than it is now during the church, what we call the church age. And I'm going to go in that in some future videos. I don't want to go in that too far right now because it takes quite a bit of going through a lot of different scriptures to show this. Salvation will still be based upon faith in the Messiah. That still would never change. But it also, after the rapture, uh, uh, people will still, uh, there's, if you read it in, 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 the, uh, in, the future, in the books of Ezekiel and different uh, uh, books in the Bible, you'll see that, that uh, during the, the, uh, 
the actually the millennial reign of the Messiah, there will there'll be a there will be a temple built. There will be sacrifices offered, and uh, that people that on the earth will still be uh, commanded to keep uh, the the commandments and the feast. And uh, but that's a whole different study. I don't want to get in that too far now. But the main thing I want to go into is about this: that we're redeemed. If you're born again, uh, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. But the law is still in effect. But we're redeemed from the curse of it. And the fact is that that uh, our sin has been dealt with and paid for, and the price has been paid for. And that's the good news. We'll talk about this more in our next session. So thank you again for joining me this afternoon. And until next time, shalom.